Last year, you might remember dozens of birds were drowning and dying at Lake Julba up in Shenton Park due to avian botulism. You can imagine it, it was a pretty distressing scene. Well, thanks to a new water treatment program, the botulism has been reversed, but the success there could also have implications for other areas of Perth facing the issue. So we sent our roving reporter, Ash Davis, to Lake Julba to find out what has been happen- happening. Hi, Ash. How is the lake looking? Hi, Joe. Uh, yeah, I've, I've chosen a beautiful day to go out to a lake, haven't I? <laughs> the lake is looking gorgeous. It's very full of water at the moment, I think, because we've had such a lovely winter, wet winter. I'm here with Dr. Delana Herreth from Paces Aqua. And uh, Delana, it was sort of your job to sort out the botulism that was in this lake. And I have to ask you straight away off the bat about these devices that you can maybe hear, Joe. It's, um, they look like water wheels and they have solar panels on them. Can you just explain what they are? Yes, yeah, so they're basically solar paddable aerators. So um, as the sun shines, the solar panels pick up the energy, uh, distribute the energy into the pumps, and the pumps basically rotate the wheels and create an agitation at the surface, and that would basically aerate the water, which will basically improve the water quality of this lake. Yeah, it makes sense. Um, so just remind us what avian botulism is. So botulism is um, when this species called Clostridium botulism gets into your waterways and um, so through rain, through a summer rain usually uh, or late autumn sort of rain, um, you get the Clostridium botulism start to come in and um, they're also present on the wetland sediments on the side and also in the water. It, it gets in and then the invertebrates start to ingest it and then the birds start to get the invertebrates and the birds start to get this toxin and they start to get botulism, which is when you get a bit of paralysis occurring in the birds, where they have like a weakened neck and weakened body, they can't really fly out. Um, so as a result, they progressively get weaker and weaker until they die. Yeah. Is this a very common problem in Perth? I mean, um, obviously, a lot of our wetlands go quite dry during summer and then they sort of bounce back in winter. Does, does botulism happen around the place? Yeah, it occurs in a lot of the council lakes because uh, uh, the water quality just doesn't tend to be as good in um, urban lakes compared to uh, natural lakes further away because you've got your plants and stuff filtering the water and photosynthesis basically releases oxygen as a byproduct. Um, but in urban lakes, it's inevitable that, you know, it's going to come back. It's an inevitable. So, because the thing is, global warming's on the rise, and as everything warms up, temperatures increases, and then you also have an extended summer drought period. And when that happens, uh, you know, that's favorable conditions for uh, bacteria like Clostridium botulism to get on and, and multiply exponentially, and then that's when birds get in trouble. So it's quite common. And this is kind of new technology that we've used combined with aerobic bacteria and anaerobic bacteria and enzymes to basically treat the problem. Uh, the treatment itself, and I mean, I'm looking at these water wheels, it feels quite environmentally friendly. Is, is that the, the aim here? Yeah, well, the good thing is there's no power cables involved here, apart from solar panels just connecting to the pumps. So using sunlight to basically um, uh, energise the, the pumps. So that's a definite advantage. Um, and it works pretty well, you know, it's pumping up to about uh, one horsepower, I think, from memory. Um, so, yeah, it's energy friendly and anaerobic bacteria already occur in our soils, which we can use and multiply, harvest. A company called BBA Biosolutions does that, which is great. Got to give credit to them. And also uh, the lake enzymes as well. They're from a natural solution, Aussie Pond Solutions. Uh, Jason does that, so credit to them as well. So these are all natural solutions we've used. And there was no other option because it's very difficult to get electricity onto this site. And also it's uh, a, an Aboriginal burial site, so it's a sacred site to the Noongar people here as well. Yeah, so it's quite sensitive. Yep. So um, tell me, have you spoken to any other councils or uh, have you been to other wetlands in Perth where this, this could potentially be u- utilised? Not quite yet. It's the uh, first time we've actually used these strategies um, to overcome this problem. Uh, this was a challenging lake because the water levels sort of going up and down. So this is the first time we used the solar paddle aerates, but we've used lots of other aeration systems like lake bed aeration systems, fountains, these are enjoy systems, uh, which work pretty well. But in situations, I think, where the water level drops, and there's no access to power. Maybe solar paddle areas are, are the way to go. They're not easy to install and they're not the best um, material to work with, but it was one of the only solutions we had. But it's the first time we had like 40 bird debts to one bird debts, you know, so it was a significant finding. Hopefully, you know, other councils will catch on to this um, strategy and, uh, and they'll get onto it. 
Uh, so obviously this falls under the city of Subiaco. How have they been to work with? They've been absolutely amazing. Belinda Stobie just knows all about uh, water and um, and also they've funded these things and the strategies that they've implemented. Uh, we've recommended probably about nine and they've basically implemented basically about nine too. So it was incredible how they've been on board and um, it's credit to them that they've um, you know joined us in this in this venture and, um, and and we've come through to a solution like this. And so, yeah, we were looking at dozens of birds dying last year. And then what has it been like this year since you've, you've put all these solutions in? There's only been a few bird deaths, but I think it's most likely due to natural causes. So unlikely um, uh, botulism. Um, but yeah, birds will die uh, from time to time with um, sickness, other sicknesses, and also old age and predators and all that kind of stuff. So it's, it, it's been quite remarkable what, what outcome we've had. Mm. Um, and Delana, when I, I just quickly, when I look at this, it's sort of it's reminiscent to me of, I guess, what you might see in a natural pond or a swimming pond or a natural pool. Is that the sort the same sort of idea, rather than, you know, taking out the toxin with a chlorine or something? That it's something a bit different. Yeah, absolutely. It's similar sort of concepts. Um, you know, you get your plants, um, which which help with um, controlling the water quality, and you got your aeration systems, but just different methods. So for lakes and this system, you obviously can't have a solid paddle aerator in a pool because it would just aesthetically won't look pretty. But in a big ecosystem like Lake Julebup, um with a significant surface area, it will have minimal scarring impact. Um, so, um, yeah, similar sort of systems, uh, but different. Yeah, I guess similar strategies, but different systems. Sorry. Yeah. So you've had to do a bit of revegetation work as well. Yeah, we did quite a fair bit of reveg, uh, but I don't know how well it went. Uh, from what I heard, the trees uh, struggled. The Maluka trees in the middle. Uh, but some of the sedges might have survived on the sides, but Belinda from City of Subiaco has already been on to that uh, historically. As you can see, there's heaps of plants on the side. So, yeah. yeah. Brilliant. Thank you so much for your time, Dr. Delana Harris there from Passes Aqua Joe. Thank you very much, Ash, uh, Ash speaking, uh, about the botulism, the avian botulism that was causing a lot of issues at Lake Julblup, and uh, hopefully that can help with other areas in Perth that are also facing that issue. It's almost 1.30. News headlines coming up.